Hello and welcome to part two of our Hippo Teething Ring tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be working on the ears, the teething ring wrap, we're going to attach it all together, and we're going to show you how to make your optional flower. So let's get into it. Once we have completed our face and head, we're going to work on the ears now. So for the ears, we're going to take our color A yarn again, and we're going to start with a magic ring. And with that magic ring, we are going to make six single crochets within the ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just like that. And then we're going to just pull our yarn tail tight. So we have this little half circle. I'll take my um, stitch marker that I like to use. Again, you can use a regular stitch marker as well. And I'm just going to place that there. All right, now for row two of the ear, we're going to place an increased stitch in each stitch around. So an increased stitch is two stitches in one. So yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, so that's one. And into the same stitch, we're going to place another. We're going to repeat this six times, so you should have 12 stitches at the end of this round. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. For row three, we're going to do the combination single crochet and an increase. So, single crochet and increase. And we're going to repeat this six times as well for a stitch count of 18 at the end. Single crochet, increase. Single crochet, increase. Single crochet, Increase, single crochet, increase, and we'll do one more single crochet, increase. That is row three. Now for row four and five, we're going to single crochet 18. So one single crochet in each stitch around for both rows four and five. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight.
Now for row six, we're going to do the combination single crochet and a decrease stitch. So single crochet, decrease. Single crochet, decrease. And we're gonna repeat this six times or a stitch count of 12 at the end of this round. Single crochet, decrease. Right, and that is row six. Now row seven is our last row. We're going to just place one single crochet around for all 12 stitches, so single crochet 12. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And 12. I'm going to remove my stitch marker here. I'm going to just stuff my beginning tail right into the ear. I want to go in there and then I'm just going to take this strand here and I'm just going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch yarn over pull through and I'm going to cut probably a 12 inch strand of yarn because we need to sew the ear and we also need to sew the ear onto the head so I'm just going to yarn over, pull through to create a little knot there. Now from here, what we're going to do is we are going to pinch the ear and you want to make sure your yarn end is kind of in the corner. And I'm just going to put my darning needle on my yarn end now so it's ready to go. So once I've pinched it one way, I'm then going to pinch it the other way. So it's going to look like this. And I'm going to sew this end here together. So I'm just going to insert my needle. And I'm going to just go back and forth here and sew together this last row. So that that is what our ear is looking like. Once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to make a little knot. And then our ear is ready to be sewn onto the head. But first we need to make one more ear. 
So go back and watch the ear pattern again if you need to, to remake the ear again so that you have two. And once you have two, I will meet back here and we will attach it to our head. All right, so once we have both our ears completed, we will attach them to the head. So we'll grab our head. Now, we want to attach our ears to rows 18 to 21 of the head. And we want them to be kind of on the side, uh, kind of more in line with the eyes. We want about eight stitches in between the two ears. So what I like to do is I like to take some fabric pins and I'm just going to count back here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So this is row eighteen. So I'm just going to place a pin here and then 18, 19, 20, 21. So around here. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. Just going to just roughly place my pins and then I can move them around. Just like that. So I just want about eight stitches in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's about eight stitches. And I want them more in line with the eyes, which is kind of what I have. So once I'm happy with the placement of these, I'm going to take my ear and again, using the fabric pins, I'm going to just pin my ear in where I want it. You can also just use the pins that you have here. that's easier for you. But I still like to have one pin that's marking row 18 so I know that I've gone far enough forward. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this is row 18 so that's where I want my front um, the front of the ear to sit. So I'm just going to do one at a time because I find it easier to sew one at a time on. So I'm just going to take my darning needle and I'm going to attach it to my yarn end for this ear. And I'm just going to start sewing this on. You can also use, um, I actually have, I actually have a little angled uh, darning needle that also works really well. This one's a little bit big though, so I'm just not sure how that will work, but it might be easier. And of course these stitches are very, very tight. I'm just going to sew this ear on and then we'll do the other side. So that's kind of what we're looking like right now. 
Now once you're happy with the placement of your ear, I usually just do one more little knot here right at the base of where I've sewn it on. And that's just to give it some extra security. And then I'm just gonna push that down right where I have that little indent from shaping the face. You can keep that all in that one area there. So there's one ear attached. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the other ear. And then again, I'm just going to push this to the back area. And I'm just going to make a little knot. And push that through to the same spot. And then once I'm happy with where my ears are sitting, I am just going to tie a knot in the back to make sure it stays in place. I just, extra security always helps. And then I will just cut that, take my hook, and weave in those ends. And there are our ears attached. All right, so once we have the head complete, we are now gonna work on the ring here. And we're going to do a little wrap for the ring. It's gonna be about halfway down your ring. And it, it's really, really easy to make, so we'll get started on that. Now we're gonna use the same color yarn. Again, you can use whatever color you want. It does not have to be the same color, but I am going to use the same one. And to start, I'm going to make a slip knot. And to begin, this part of the pattern, we're going to chain 31. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So there's our chain of 31. Now depending on your ring, yours may be a little bit different. So what you want to do is you just want to kind of drape this over and see where it lands on your ring. You may have a smaller ring than I do, or you just may want your um, 
your ring wrap to be a little bit smaller. So right now, mine sits right about there, so about halfway. But if you want to make it shorter, you absolutely can just decrease the amount of chains that you've done. It does not have to be um, exactly what I've done. So just do whatever you think looks best. Now for row two, what we're going to do is usually when you're working into the chain, you're going to work into, you know, the top loop only usually is what I do. But for this pattern, I like to work actually into this back bump here. And the reason for that is that it creates a clean edge on one side, on the bottom side. So um, when you're sewing your edges together, it's really, really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip this first chain here. And we're going to go into the second chain. And we're going to single crochet 30. So one single crochet in each stitch along. And like I said, I'm going to go into this back bump for mine, but you do what works best for you. And this first row is always the most difficult to get into those the right chain. So that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's the top, and then here's the bottom. So it still creates those even V's, just like the top. And I just think it looks a lot neater when you go into the back bump. So I'm going to continue my uh, single crochets all the way along for 30 single crochets. And then I'll meet you back here for the next row. So this is what we're looking like after row two. We have our 30 single crochets and just make sure you're counting back to make sure you have them all. And this is what the top here looks like. And then the bottom looks like this and it's just as pretty. Um, and that's just because we worked into the back bump. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna move on to row three. And for row three to start, we're going to make one chain. So we're going to chain one and we're going to flip our work. Now we're going to work back along this edge again with 30 single crochets. So we're going to be working into the top two loops now like normal. And we're going to make our 30 single crochets. Now we're going to do this for rows 3 to 11. So 30 single crochets, chain 1, flip, 30 single crochets all the way to row 11. Then we will meet back here to attach our teether wrap to the wooden teether. So I'll meet you back here after you finish row 11. All right, so this is up to row 11 completed. And I will mention, um, similar to 
how you can adjust how many uh, chains you're going to do for the uh, wrap. You can also adjust how many rows you're doing um, based on the size of your ring. So basically uh, what you want is you want to be able to wrap this just so the edges are touching so we can sew them together um, and you want a nice tight fit. So whatever that means for you, just do that. So for me, it's 11 rows, um, but it might be different for you. So to finish this off here, I'm just going to make a chain and I'm just going to cut my yarn here. And I'm gonna cut probably 12 to 16 inches just so I can sew that on. And I'm just gonna pull this all the way through. Just pull that to tie that off. Next, I'm gonna grab my teething ring and my darning needle. And I'm just going to thread my darning needle on now. And then basically what we're gonna do is I'm just going to wrap this. And I'm just going to sew these together. Now we wanna do stitch for stitch. Um, so we don't have any missing stitches. So you're just gonna go underneath and pull tight. And then into the second. And then I just like to go around. So this is over, going to lay over top. I just find for this, it makes a nice clean line on the bottom. And we're just going to go all the way around and sew this together. Just making sure we're not skipping any stitches. And that's kind of what the seam is going to look like. So there is our teething ring wrap attached. Now I just like to take these ends and tie a little knot and then I will just weave them in. And that is completed. These can just be weaved in through the ring. And just cut those. And there is your wrap. So once we have the wrap completed and the hippo head, then we are going to just attach the two. Now, um, again, personal preference where you want to attach it. I personally like to attach it around rows 15 and 16 of the head. So for me, that's actually right where I put my, um, my yarn from shaping the face. 
but we'll count back. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 is just right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a strand of our yarn that we used for the body and I'm going to cut that. And I'm just going to thread that through my darning needle. And on my ring, I'm just going to find the middle and where I want my hippo to sit. So it's going to kind of sit like this. So you want it to be centered. So I'm just going to put mine kind of where I think I want it. And then I'm just going to feed my yarn here through. And this strand of yarn is what I'm going to use to sew my head on. So I'm just going to put that there and I'm just going to start sewing that on. Now you may notice that sometimes it can be a little wobbly, so I'm just going to put a couple extra anchor stitches around the back of the head and underneath just to keep it really steady, just because this is for a baby. Um, so they're going to be throwing it around, throwing it in their mouth, so you want to make sure that it's extra secure. So just place whatever extra stitches you need to to make sure it's extra secure. This needle is a little bit big for this uh, project, but that's okay. So once you're happy with how it's sewn on, we will just do the last optional step of the little daisy flower and then we'll be all done. Lastly, we're going to do the optional daisy flower for the head of our hippo. I just kind of put mine on the top of the head, but you can put it anywhere or you don't have to make this one at all. So to begin, we're going to start with this yellow yarn and it's going to be the center of our um, of our flower. So to begin, we are going to make a magic ring. And inside the magic ring, we're going to make eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll pull that tight. Now normally we'd be working in a spiral, but for this I want the center to be a full circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to just place a slip stitch into the very first stitch that we made, and that's just to make it a full circle. So I'm just going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, 
and pull through. And that's going to make a circle. Now I'm going to cut my yarn and we're all done with the yellow. And I'm just going to pull that through with a little knot. Now I'm going to take my next color, so I'm going to be using this off-white yarn, and I'm going to make a slip knot. And I'm going to place it right where I place that slip, slip stitch from the yellow yarn because that's our first stitch and I'm just going to make a slip stitch here as well just to start my new color. Now to begin the, the petals of the flower we are going to start with a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five just like that. Next, we're going to work down this chain. First thing we're going to do is we're going to skip this first chain stitch and we're going to work a single crochet into the second chain from our hook. So right here, we'll place a single crochet. Now into the next chain from the hook, we're going to place a half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over insert our hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Next, in the next chain from the hook, we're going to place a double crochet. So yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Then we're going to place a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. So this is what we're looking like once we've completed all the way down our chain row. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a slip stitch right into this next stitch over. So right here, going to place a slip stitch and there is one petal completed. Now we're going to repeat that again. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Skip the first, single crochet in the second half double crochet in the third, double crochet in the fourth, and a half double crochet in the fifth, and then a slip stitch into this next stitch here. Now we're going to repeat that again for a total of six petals. Sorry, I lied. There's going to be eight petals total for your flower, just like that. Then once you're done, just going to make a slip stitch into this final stitch here, and I'm going to cut my yarn. 
and then we yarn over and pull through. And there is our flower. Now I like to place my flower kind of right on the top here, just like that. So I'm just going to place a pin just to hold it in place. And then I just want to sew on the yellow section, not the white section, because we want these leaves and petals to just kind of do what they want to do. So we're just going to use the yellow yarn. I'm just going to attach that to my darning needle here. And I'm just going to sew this on the head. Just like that and I'm just going to go under through the back here grabbed a petal hole on my way so that is now attached and then I'm just going to weave in these yarn ends here. I'm just going to push this other yellow one into the same area as the other one so that I can tie them off together. Again, just to for increased security that's gonna stay. And then these, I'm just going to tie these in a knot as well. Just weave these into the bot the uh, head. And same with these white strands. And there is our completed hippo teething ring. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's so much fun to make and it makes a great gift for anyone that you love. Please let us know in the comments down below how you liked the tutorial. We hope you guys have a lovely day. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.
Bye.